Good morning. It's 10 a.m. on uh, July 7th, 2020. And this is meeting the Stewart County Board of Supervisors. I hereby call our meeting to order. Um, and I would ask if anyone wants to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, our administration building is so close to the public and we are limiting um, capacity in our, in our public meeting room for those two reasons. Uh, we are not having in-person access to the meeting for the public, but we are using Zoom and on our agenda center, on the agenda under meetings and agendas, today's agenda, there are um, instructions on how to, um, how to connect with us via Zoom. It looks like we have a fairly short agenda today. I'm looking for a long meeting. I would entertain a motion for adoption of the agenda. So moved. Okay, motion by Hedens. Um, I'll second. So second by Merkin. Hedens? Aye. Merkin, aye. Agenda is adopted. And I would point out uh, Supervisor Olson is not here yet. So, but Supervisors Merkin and Hedens are. Next updates on COVID 19. Are there any updates from staff? Any updates from the supervisors? I would simply mention that um, there's been discussion um, amongst uh, local government here about the fact that we um, we know that uh, Iowa State University is going to be opening for the fall semester and um, move in start around August 1st or shortly thereafter. Um, it has been suggested that it would be good for Stewart County to have a test Iowa site um, for when the students um, move in. Um, I am putting together a resolution for that, which uh, I will put on our special meeting agenda for Friday. Thank you. So, okay. Uh, public comment. This comment period is for the public to address topics on today's agenda. Is there any, so I'll open the public comment session. Is there any, are there any members of the public who would like to make any comments? I don't see any hands raised. Do you, Leanne? No. Okay, then I will close public comment session. Uh, discussion and consideration of items brought before the board with request for immediate action. We have none. Um, agency reports is next. We have received an annual report from Mainstream Living, and I believe everybody's reviewed that. And I can't see that uh, anybody's anybody's on the line from Mainstream. No, Bill Vaughn is. Is no, he? Bill's oh, on. Bill's on. Yeah. Bill's on. Thank you. Do you have any comments? Anything you'd like to add, Bill? No, I just would like to thank the uh, the county for your support. Um, you have always got our back, and I greatly appreciate it. Uh, mainstream living uh, doesn't uh, bill many services. I think it totaled about, you know, 4,500 for the year. Um, but for those individuals in supported community living or daily services or medically fragile, um, uh, it is a, a needed service until they get on Medicaid. So I greatly appreciate that. And I would just thank the uh, Board of Supervisors for your support. Certainly. We thank you for all your good work. Are there any questions, Lisa? Uh, Bill, thanks for being on the phone today and for your report. I'm just wondering, can you um, share a little bit what are some of the changes or accommodations that you had to institute due to uh, COVID-19? Well, um, we've closed our offices um, uh, to the general public, uh, shortened office hours. The center uh, we closed in Ames um, and are providing services in the homes or the sites for uh, people uh, during the days. Um, we're trying to figure out how to open the center up again and whether that's going to be safe for our individuals. Um, a lot of the people that we serve are extremely high risk um, for um, based on age or um, disability or other co-occurring disorders that they might have um, of catching a respiratory um, uh, disease. So um, we are very cautious. We're using we started masks and taking IDs and uh, I'm sorry, taking uh, temperatures 
um, and disinfecting um, like March 1st. Um, we closed down all of our locations and isolated them. Um, we have not had an outbreak for one of our members since June 6th. Um, we had before that, you know, we served about 400 people or so in four different counties. Um, so uh, we've got a very large group that we're providing services for. We have had locations that have had COVID outbreaks where multiple people have lived in under one roof and we've been able to isolate one or two people have gotten uh, COVID-19 um, and we've been able to successfully you know, help them and treat them without hospitalizations. Um, we have lost one person. Um, he was in his 80s. Um, he also had um, other, other um, things that uh, um, contributed, I think, to his death. Um, so it has been a challenge, I think, to keep people safe and alive, but um, I'm really happy with our staff and, and how they've really dug in to um, kind of help. We've gotten PPP support, um, and that has allowed us to pay hazard pay for our staff who have to go into an area if somebody is infected and, and help provide services for them. Um, and uh, that has been a, a good help as well. Thank you for that information. So, Bill, this is Linda Merkin. How about how many times have you had to have staff go into homes where there was somebody who was positive? How many times have we had to have staff go into a home? Um, well, before June 6th or 9th, I think it was 6th, was, um, before June 6th, it was a daily occurrence that, there, that we had um, somebody at one of our houses that was sick. We had, we had five houses at different times that had had um, outbreaks. Um, none of our members had it because in early March, we isolated them and they did not have it. Um, but over time, staff brought it into some of our locations unknowingly. You know, um, they had gone someplace and, and uh, they were showing no signs, but after a few days, and, and of course they had worked, <laughs> um, uh, they, they eventually had brought, uh, brought it into some of our locations. Thank you. Questions? Well, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thanks for everything you're doing. We appreciate it. And it's uh, incredibly challenging in these times. And uh, thank your staff for us for being willing to do what needs to be done. I certainly will. Thank you. Next, we have consideration of minutes. And there is, a, um, I think, on the special minutes of June 23rd, there's a, a correction that needs to be made. Morris, I believe you circled it. And I think I know what it is, but why don't... Um, um, yes. And um, just, uh, it is just how, how we have identified matrix, uh, Master Matrix team member Kathy Mims. And um, just she's identified as a member of the public. She actually was appointed as a member of the Planning and Zoning Commission. But I left that with um, uh, our clerk, uh, Shelly Belisle at to work out with Lucy, and I know Lucy sent an email. I did not have time to she look came, at it. Okay, Lucy came in about uh, five minutes for five or ten minutes for the board meeting, and and she said that the change was fine. We could change that to representative of planning and zoning commission. Thank you. I, was, I, have, was, I apologize. I have a small medical issue this time. Okay. So, okay. So, okay. Glad you're here. So, are there any other corrections? that anybody has for any of the sets of minutes. So I would entertain a motion for approval of the minutes with the change on the June 23rd um, special session to um, change member of the public to representative of the Planning and Zoning Commission in front of Kathy Men's name. I would so vote. Second. Okay, Olson. Aye. Pittance. Aye. Merkin, aye. Adopted. Thank you. Next is consideration of personnel actions. I'd entertain a motion for approval of personnel actions as listed. So moved as presented. I second. Okay, Heavens. Aye. Olson. Aye. Merkin, aye. Next consideration of claims, I'd entertain a motion. I would so move that claims be approved as presented. Second. Okay, Olson. Aye. Heavens. Aye. Merkin, aye. Claims are approved as presented. Next consent agenda. Are there any items that need to be pulled for discussion? Not for me. Not for me. Hearing none, then I would entertain a motion on the consent agenda. So moved as presented. I would second. Heddens? Aye. Olson? Aye. Merkin? Aye. 
Consent agenda items approved. Public hearing items, there are none. Additional items, there are none. Department reports, planning and development quarterly report. Jerry Moore, are you on? I think he is. JC, DM, is that Jerry? Brief update. Can everybody hear me? Yes, yeah. Hi, Jerry. <laughs> okay, good morning. Um, I'd like to thank Amelia and Marcus for working on this quarterly report. This is April through June. Um, I'll just talk about some of the highlights. The first thing that's really interesting is when comparing the fourth quarters for the last four years, we um, exceeded the previous uh, three years, which is a really interesting thing during a, a pandemic. Uh, I think there were, you know, there were a lot of people at home and they decided to take up uh, personal improvements uh, to their property. So um, we had a total of 64 total zoning permits for this second quarter. Um, the distribution, if you look at the distribution map, it's throughout the uh, county, which is really good to see also. Um, but the ranking is accessory structures followed by additions to single family dwellings. Um, followed by construction of new dwellings. Um, other items, other projects, uh, things that are progressing with Citizen Serve. Again, that's the the uh, permitting and development case uh, software that we're going to be moving towards. Um, all of the applications have been uploaded to the system. Uh, we've been tweaking on that for the uh, last several months. Uh, we're continuing to work on the reviewing the data migration. Uh, we offered some training to those um, county department staff that review zoning permits. Um, and then tentatively, we have a go live date of August 3. Again, this would be just for zoning permit applications only at this time and then um, we will work in development case applications like uh, conditional use permit applications, rezonings, uh, things of that nature. I'm happy to report that the, um, it was a zoning, or excuse me, a flood permit um, in, on uh, Wolf Creek, which is in Collins Township on 340th. Um, that project has been completed. That uh, creek has been restored, um, and it really uh, looks very good. Um, it was an effort, um, a project that was put on by, or uh, taken on by Prudent Terra, and I think they did a really uh, good job in, um, you know, bringing that creek back to life. Again, it was um, you know, one of the adjacent landowners um, had a plan uh, to kind of change the route of that creek and um, it got stopped by an adjacent landowner and ultimately it got restored to its um, original orientation and alignment. Uh, last Larry, month we finished, go ahead. I just had a question, who paid for that restoration? Um, the property owner who did the, I'll call it damage. Okay. They, That's what they, I they hired a consultant to to do the design and actual work. Plus, they were fined by the DNR. That's that's what I wanted to hear. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we, as part of our annual work program, we do site visits with uh, the mobile home parks in the county. We did those last month, and uh, for the most part. Uh, they were in good condition. We, there were a few lots that had some debris um, junk that needed to be cleaned up, and we're working with them on that. Um, there were there was a a new unit that was brought in without a permit, and we received a permit for that. Uh, but again, for the most part, uh, they were in uh, pretty good condition and uh, fairly clean. Next era energy. Uh, received that conditional use permit to 
convert 100 of their existing units in Northeast Story County. Um, that project is completed. I want to thank Marcus for doing all those site inspections. Um, he noticed from doing the review, though, that there were about four or five address 911 markers that were missing. And so we communicated uh, with the consultant uh, that did the work, and they submitted uh, new applications uh, recently. And so those are being reviewed, and uh, final permits for that project can be issued now. Uh, the Ames Urban Fringe Plan Amendment, again, work program item. I think we had some really good discussions with the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, and the Board of Supervisors, and then at the joint meeting recently on the 1st of uh, July. And so uh, we're taking those comments and putting together a draft letter that we'll take back to the Planning and Zoning Commission at their meeting in August for a review and then on to the Board of Supervisors uh, for review and action uh, before it gets sent out to the City of Ames and the City of Gilbert. Uh, last thing is uh, we're on our second pass-through on the Story County Land Development Regulations. Um, it's an internal review. Uh, we were to look at um, the provisions to determine whether or not they're obsolete, inefficient. Uh, we also have some state law changes that went into effect that we need to make adjustments uh, towards. And so that work uh, continues. Um, in addition to the natural resource mapping, I want to thank Marcus for a lot of the work uh, that's gone into that. And we're, we're reviewing that with uh, Story County Conservation Board staff. So I'd ha be happy to answer any questions. Any questions, board? I have none. Thank you, Jerry. This is Laura. No, I don't have any either. Sorry, I was looking back at my notes that I did before, but no, so good. That's okay. And I asked my only question, and um, thanks for the report, and thank you to you and your staff for the good work that you're doing, and uh, particularly on the urban fringe, and I appreciate it. And I know also, I'm just going to say, I know you got thrown a real curve with um, the legislation, and we are still working on um, locating some new members of Planning and Zoning Commission and Zoning Board of Adjustment. And for anybody who might be listening, that's because now all of those people have to be from the unincorporated areas. So if anybody's listening and knows anyone who wants to serve on either the Planning and Zoning Commission or, might, or, might, or the Zoning Board of Adjustment, I think our current uh, job opening posting is till uh, July 10th, but we might extend that if we don't get sufficient applications. So, and thank you, Jerry. Yep, thank you, board. Do we have any other reports? Doesn't look like it. Upcoming <coughs> agenda items. I did mention earlier that I'm preparing a resolution for a special meeting this Friday to ask the governor and the Iowa Department of Public Health to. Um, to install a um, test Iowa site prior to August 1 if possible in Story County because of all the students who will be coming back. And I think other jurisdictions are working on that as well. Uh, any other agenda items coming up? I don't have any. Um, are we doing uh, the closed session on the appeal? We, we will, um, yes, I've been talking to the county attorney's office about that and uh, we will also have on the agenda to review the fact that the, the preliminary construction permit has been issued for, by BNR for Maxwell Moore. <coughs> and that might require going into closed session. Okay, and then my, um, uh, uh, also associated with Maxwell Farm is, um, I'm hoping that we'll be able to get an update from um, uh, our environmental health director and our county attorney uh, office about um, the inquiry that I had and also inquiry from a member of the public about chapter 21 and how the master matrix team fits into chapter 21. I will uh, invite uh, our environmental health director to the meeting. Actually, I've been corresponding with her this morning. Does she know about it then? Uh, I, I didn't yeah. see a copy. I, 
just just as I'll say that that's not okay. Do I need to talk to her about Friday or have you already invited her to Friday? Uh, I had on that we can deal with this afterwards. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Um any other upcoming agenda items then? So we have two items for Friday. Public forum number two, and this would be for comments from the public on items not on this agenda. The board may not take any action on the comments due to the requirements of the open meetings law, but may do so in the future. So I'll open public forum number two. Are there any members of the public who um, have anything that they would like to comment on? Pardon? Oh yes, and I do unmute yourself if you do. Okay, seeing or hearing nobody, I will call this public forum number two, and we'll go to liaison assignments, committee meetings, updates, and announcements from the supervisors. Uh, the only thing I have for um, on my schedule is the CCMT meeting tomorrow, and then I have that EMS training center uh, tomorrow evening. Um, I also have on my calendar, I'm gonna try to participate in the, I believe tomorrow night has another NAACP presentation that our county attorneys on. Do I have the right date? I think they do them on Thursday, but I'm not positive. Right, that's what I, oh, I did. I, I meant to say uh, on mm -hmm. Thursday the 9th, if, if I am correct. And I think that's at six o'clock if I saw it correctly. Okay, usually it's six. And then the jurisdiction, jurisdictional meeting at seven, I have that on my calendar um, as well. I also want to say that I did, um, uh, sit in or zoom in to the Cambridge uh, City Council meeting um, last night. Um, they are working on the urban renewal grant and they also brought up the um, grant for the um, additional um, uh, story county. And at this point, the they, radio grant? Yes, mm -hmm. the radio grant, thank you. They at this point felt that they had enough and so they would probably not be okay. applying to there. This is a okay. an FYI on that. Um, Boris? Um, uh, I'll, I'm going to call in tomorrow morning for the CCMT meeting. Okay. Um, the transportation collaboration quarterly meeting scheduled usually for that Wednesday afternoon for the quarter has been canceled given what's going on with COVID, et cetera. There aren't really any updates that haven't been shared among members already. I will be on the Thursday jurisdictional update meeting. I was not aware. I just saw it, so. Of the county attorney one, so thank you for that, Lisa. Yes. So I'll try to tune in for that. Um, I do want to remind um, us, okay, I'll be there because I'm part of the um, board for the AAMPO, uh, the Area Plant Transportation Committee, but that next Tuesday evening at six o'clock, the AAMPO does meet. And so that's the opportunity um, where I'll be taking it, and you're welcome to do that also to speak, to remind Ames that, um, you know, we, we've got some issues about transportation and we need a collaborative effort, including discussion of possibly financial collaboration headed into the future. And uh, that takes care of, uh, of my update. Thank you. Super, do you have a link for the Zoom for the AAMPO meeting? I assume it's I uh, yes, it will be, and I haven't received it yet. Normally, we will get the packet on Thursday. Okay. So, would you be willing to yes, share that? Absolutely, that would be sure. super. Uh -huh. Yes, okay. but normally the clerk doesn't put it out till Thursday, the big city clerk. So that's next Tuesday, the fourteenth. Correct. Okay. Um, as several of the same meetings, in addition, uh, fire associate, fire chiefs, the fire association meeting tomorrow night, which I was going to attend and, and see if we have more interest in the uh, radios for Storycom. Um, CCMT as usual, I might have to call in. I'll see how my, my morning is going because I have another appointment. Um, then next week, um, I guess, that's, I guess just the same things that you've got. Okay. Um, any other announcements? Then, anybody? If not, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Edmonds. Aye. Wilson. Aye. Merkin. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.